So I'm joined by Alexander Kostinuk here in the press conference. Alexandra, a draw today, your fourth game. You're coming off a really good win in Munich, but things are not going your way in this tournament for the moment. Tell us about the first four rounds and if you're slowly getting into form in the tournament. Yeah, things don't go quite the same way, but it's hard to expect the same way because in Munich it was like just perfect. Uh, well, yes, four very hard games and uh, three very long ones, so almost five five hours each. So, and still two rounds uh, to go before three days. So, quite a complicated start, but. Um, as I mentioned, I think several times those tournaments can go either way. So as long as I'm kind of in the fighting mood, that's fine. In Munich, you were really on fire. I mean, you not only won the tournament, but you you were, you crushed it. Your your play was fantastic. Here, you're playing well. Maybe the position is a bit more tougher. The openings. What what do you think is the reason you're not getting really good aggressive positions like you like? Well, I mean, I think I get quite good positions. I just misplay at some point or blunder because in the first game, even though, I mean, I played badly, but uh, then my opponent made inaccuracies and I had great chances. I just blundered in one move. And even though I managed, you know, to fight uh, back and almost save the game, but um, couldn't quite do it uh, in the second time trouble. And in the um, in all other like games, those were hard for uh, draws, also quite good positions at some point, but some blunders or very unfortunate decisions. So uh, again, it's hard to compare. I mean, if everything um, works your way, if everything goes your way and you kind of uh, start scoring, uh, that's one tournament. If I mean, something doesn't click and doesn't go away, it's another tournament. But again, it's very hard to, you know, to have uh, tournaments only uh, as perfect as in Munich. Uh, sometimes you need to suffer, you need to fight back, you need somehow to, to find this, uh, like, um, um, playing mood. It's, it's not that easy and uh, nobody said it would. Of course, chess is really, really hard. My last question. So today you were playing black against um, Harika. It seemed to me that it was a very similar opening a position in the second round. I just didn't... I was unable to understand what was happening in the game. You had a... You were a pawn down, but you had very good piece play. Her pawn structure was very weak. But the computer was going up and down. Uh, what, what was happening in today's game? I was unable to understand. For the viewers who have seen the game, Explain to them a bit how the game went and what happened. But I think we both also <laughs> had no clue what was going on. Okay. Well, it was, yeah, a long, uh, I don't know if I can say theoretical, but uh, something that we both prepared at home. Mm, line, she opted for queen c1 instead of queen c2 as Bella played. Well, with Bella, I just forgot my opening theory here. I kind of... Uh, I think I knew the line until knight f8, and yes. then she played knight e4, which I didn't like at all, but I'm not sure I played well. <laughs> Actually, you know, every single move when I like was making some decisions, I was not sure and not, not happy. But at some point, I, I thought that when she decided not to exchange queens and played queen g2, yes. I thought that was a very bad move because I didn't like my position, I think, after queen g6 immediately. Yes. So after queen g2, I was so happy because, okay, she has no, I mean, ideas, attacking ideas, or at least I didn't see them. And I, mm, I had a clear plan, right, uh, to protect my king first and then bring my bishop to c6, put pressure on e4. And I saw that I'm doing brilliantly, but I, I started playing too, too fast. And uh, after rook g2, I think I had to play b3, a3, and then continue with the same plan. Because in the game, I just simply... I blundered again when she was, I mean, when I was going, when I played bishop c6, after knight d3, I was going to take on e4. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes e4, mm -hmm. or only when I was about to make this move, I realized that rook takes f6, I just lose the game. Yes. And so I spent all my time, and like barely on one minute, I, I mean, I noticed this king g8, I'm not sure it's helping a lot, but at least, okay, it's the, let me stay in the game. And even at the very end, I mean, she blundered uh, knight b3 and she offered to draw, 
But actually, when I was like going to take on B3, before her uh, draw offer, I realized that there is a trick with rook G1. And if I take on A2, she uh, goes knight E7, and king H7, rook H5, checkmate, king F8, knight G6, and also checkmate. But I think I'm holding there. But I was so happy and relieved that she offered to draw. So you decided that's enough for today, you know? <laughs> I think that there the, the were just a lot of uh, ups and downs. Alexander, thanks for coming to talk to me and uh, the best of luck for the rest of the games.